The science squad is here to save the day. The science squad is here to save the porpoises. Oh yeah, porpoises. Oh, fourth graders are already here. I didn't realize I was too busy looking up stuff about the porpoises. Uh, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here today. Let's go ahead and check out what we're learning today. So, figured out what a porpoise was yesterday um, with our lesson. Now we are on to the next chapter, um, pages 10 through 14, Porpoises in Peril with the Science Squad. We are gonna start off with vocabulary today because I want to show you what is going to be expected um, in the assignment on Seesaw today. If that is something you're doing, or if you're gonna do it on a piece of paper or pencil, you're gonna have the same expectations. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make this, um, you're gonna have a box in the middle and you're gonna have four boxes around it. So it's kind of like, let's pop ahead, it's kind of like this. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out that stable means it's able or likely to continue to last. It's secure. So that is our vocabulary word, so you're gonna put that in the middle. So I'm gonna put that in the middle, just like this, stable. Perfect, so now you're gonna go up in the top left corner and we're gonna write the definition. It means it's able or likely to continue to last. And then we are super lucky because this definition kind of gives us two synonyms. So that is our next box. It's a synonym and I'm just gonna put S-Y-N and if you know a synonym is the same. So synonym it means the same. If you've ever heard that song, that's how I always remember it. So synonym, it means it's strong or it's secure. And you're gonna want two synonyms. And then antonym, it means the opposite. So if you haven't ever heard that song, you should look it up, it's a really good song. So antonym, something that's opposite of strong. So if you look down at those pictures, which of these piles would be more stable? Which one of those do you think would last, left or right? I think the one on the left would last because the bigger pieces are on the bottom, right? So if I'm thinking if I want to describe the pile on the right, it's kind of maybe wobbly. That's not strong, so that could be an antonym, wobbly, or maybe weak. So you should be doing this with me. If you haven't been, that's okay, pause it, catch up with me. So you have an example so we have our definition at the top, then we have our two synonyms, our two antonyms. Then down here, you're gonna write your own sentence using the word. So something is stable, something that lasts. Ooh, you want a connection to the internet that is stable because then you can get all your channels, right? So we're gonna say, I hate when my internet connection is not stable because then it doesn't work. Not my best sentence, but I'm thinking on the spot here. Or you could even say the pile of rocks was stable because it held up in the storm or you know the house in the woods was stable because it lasted all the years, something like that. And then I like to underline the word stable in my sentence. So go ahead and get your own sentence written on there for stable. And then the very last picture is my favorite. You get to draw your own picture to help you remember. So I'm gonna draw a picture like the rocks. I'm gonna do kind of like a tower that is stable. <laughs> I'm obviously not the best artist, okay, but that's all right. So this is what you're going to be doing for your vocabulary practice. You're going to do the four boxes with the word in the middle. Hopefully pretty easy. Um, so let's go through and look. So we found a synonym, two synonyms. Then we found two antonyms or non-examples of what the word means. And then we use the word in a sentence. 
And now this is the word you will be doing for your seesaw assignment or in your notebook. So it is formulate. So I don't give you the, the definition right away. Look at that picture. She is formulating something. And then this um, from the text. Okay, it's time to formulate a plan, Jada announced, putting down her knife and fork. So what could formulate mean? Let's see if you're right. Oh, I didn't make it go away. Pause for a second. Formulate means to create, invent, or produce something by careful thought and effort. So formulating is to make something. So that's your definition. Now it's your turn. You're gonna fill this out. You're gonna do the definition, two synonyms, two antonyms, a sentence, and a picture. I think you guys can do that. You got this. All right, our enduring understanding for today. We are learning to describe a character through what they say, think, or do. We know we are successful when we can look for details in the text that describe a character. So through what they do, through what they say, or what they're thinking. Then we're gonna describe what that character is like. So we're gonna take those examples and we're gonna kind of infer or we're gonna kind of tell it the other people, what is this character like? So we're gonna do that today through this graphic organizer. We can better understand a character in a story by paying attention to what the character says and does. I already made mine, so why don't you pause the video and make yours really quick. You're gonna have a column say, what does Jada say? Because we're focusing on Jada today. What does she do? And then we're gonna take those examples and we're gonna make an inference about what is she like? So pause that video and get your own table made. All right, now that you've made your own table, we're gonna go ahead and hop into the story and see what's happening. So we are still um, with the science squad as they get to where they're staying. How do you get an executive suite, Cam asked. Jada, hopefully, Jada snorted with laughter. An executive suite, Cam, she teased, this inn only has four rooms and we have got them all booked. I'll meet you all outside on the terrace in 30 minutes. She headed off to her room to shower and change, then gathered her gear and headed out to the terrace. So remember, we're focusing on Jada, so just try and keep look out for things she says or does that tells us about her. Jada was the first one there, and she sat down while the owner of the inn brought fresh fish, vegetables, and fruit juice for the team. One by one, the team emerged from their rooms and sat down, ready to start working. Soon, munching could be heard across the terrace as the science squad ate their delicious dinner. Okay, I want to pause for a second because that food actually looks delicious, and I want some. Moving on. All right, as we see, there's some of our vocab words are on this page, so, okay. It's time to formulate a plan, Jada announced, putting down her knife and fork. She powered up her tablet and plugged in the satellite receiver, one of the gadgets given to her by Professor Q. After all, there was no way to get a wireless connection on the island. Cam flipped open his sleek laptop with the Science Squad logo on the cover. I'm ready, he said. Let's start with what we know. Jada said. Reggie pulled the paperwork from Professor Q out of his bag and began right by referring to the report. There are a lot of sick porpoises swimming in these waters, what is which is unusual because the porpoise population has been healthy and stable over the last 10 years, said Reggie. So we're going to pause for a second. So what is Jada doing that tells us a little bit about her so far? So first, Jada, if we go back, I didn't mean to go forward again. It says right here, Jada was the first one there. So I feel like that tells us a little bit about her. So that's something I'm going to write down. Jada was the first to arrive at the terrace. So I'm going to put that under the things that she does. So I'm going to put Jada was the first. 
to arrive at the terrace. And then something that just popped out to me that she did was right here. She goes, let's formulate a plan. That's something she said. But then she said she powered up her tablet and plugged in the satellite receiver. So she was the one that got the ball rolling on coming up with a plan. So that's the second thing that she did. She plugged, not she plugged, she powered up. So I'm writing right here. Let me get my arrow. I'm writing that she powered up her tablet. And plugged in her receiver. And plugged in the satellite receiver. All right, so I got all that written down, guys. So she arrived first at the terrace and she had all of her stuff ready to go. Now, something that she said that I just was talking about, it's time to formulate a plan. I'm gonna put that under things she does right here. It's time to formulate a plan. To formulate a plan. Then she says down here, let's start with what we know. So that's two different things. She says, let's start with what we know. Man, we got lots of things that Jada said and did. And I'm going to pause there and let's keep on reading. So if you need a little bit more time to fill your chart out, just go ahead and pause the video and get that finished. Otherwise, go ahead and keep following along with me. Which means something has changed to make the porpoises sick. Some kind of change in their environment, Kate added. Jada busily typed on her tablet. So how do we find out what caused the balance to shift? Reggie twirled his pencil over his fingers. Well, first we actually need to see the porpoises. Kim interrupted. Someone down on the beach might have noticed something. Maybe we should head down there when it's light tomorrow morning and talk to people on the beach. Kate looked up from the notes Professor Q had given them. It says here that a Dr. Vludman reported the problem. There's a cell phone number and he has a little research station down by the beach. Let's go down and talk to him first thing in the morning. Reggie nodded, but for now we should go to bed, he said. The team said goodnight to one another and headed back to their tiny rooms. So one more thing that she was doing is Jada busily typed on her tablet, tablet. So the whole time they were talking about all these ideas, she was typing and taking notes. So I'm gonna put that under things she does. I'm just gonna say Jada takes notes. So we've got a complete chart here of all the things that Jada did and said. Good job, fourth graders. Now, let's pause this for a second. Let's complete this, let's think. We can better understand Jada by looking at what she said and did. So now that we've looked at what she said and did, what do we think she's like? She was the first one there. She had all her stuff ready. She was the one that said, let's formulate a plan. What do you think that says about her? Well, I think first off, she's very organized, right? Because she was the first one that got her stuff done and she was the first one that got down there. And she's typing all her notes out. I also think she's kind of in charge. She likes to get the ball rolling and she likes to get everybody to get their stuff done. I also think she's very motivated, right? Did any of you say that? She wants to get this figured out and she is the first one to arrive. She gets her stuff ready to go. She's taking the notes. Um, I just think she is very motivated. Last thing, um, I don't know if you guys know the word collaborate or teamwork or works well with others. I would say something along those lines. She collaborates well with others. She listens. She's taking down the notes of everybody. She waits for them to make a plan. She doesn't do it by herself. So I would say those are four definite things I've noticed about her. She's organized. She likes to kind of be in charge, but she still works with everybody. So she's collaborative and she's motivated. So, well, look at that, guys. You have completed your first graphic organizer this year. Good job. Now let's take a step back. 
let's look at the science squad, everybody together. How would you describe the relationship of them? Like, how do they work together? So let's look back. So they're all here and it says, she's snorting with laughter. She's heading off to get her stuff done. You know, she's the first one there. One by one, they come from their rooms and they get ready. They're munching and they're eating dinner together. So I definitely think the first thing I noticed about the science squad is that they're friendly. They're kind of friends. Um, they get along. They make jokes. So there's some humor there when she was snorting and laughing on the first page, right? So they're friendly. But then later on, how do you think they work as a team when they're solving problems? Do they fight? No, they pretty much get it. Like what I was saying with Jada, they collaborate well together. They get along. They all have their parts. Like Jada's taking the notes. Um, we had, who was it? Reggie was looking up information. Um, we had Kate thinking about different ideas. And even though Kim interrupted, they were all listening to the different ideas everybody had. So I think that they got along really well and they worked together as a team very well. All right, guys, you guys are killing it. So here is your assignment for today, your reading response. You might be doing this on Seesaw or again, you might be doing this with a piece of paper or pencil. Either way, I would love for you to get this done. Um, why does Cam suggest talking to people on the beach about the porpoises? Underline your evidence that supports your answer. If you're on Seesaw, it'll be easy to underline. If you're not, just write down that evidence from the text to have it ready for when you meet with um, your teacher. So go ahead and get this done for your class. And I am so excited that I got to read with you today, guys. Can't wait to keep reading this book and keep going on these adventures with you. Have a great day. Bye, fourth graders.